بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم This is a response video to a comment made by Akbar Chaudhary recently in a program called The Stream which uh, comes on Al Jazeera online on YouTube uh, This is the program uh, This is the YouTube link and the title was The Ahmadiyya Debate um, and it's on the channel Al Jazeera English This is Akbar Chaudhary he was representing the quote-unquote Muslim side of the argument. I will start the video with a disclaimer. My disclaimer is as follows. This video does not bind any organization. The individual who has created and uploaded this video is not responsible or liable to anyone for anything associated with this video. This video is for information purposes only. There is no monetary or profit motive for uploading this video. At, at uh, 17 minutes and 20 seconds of this video, uh, during the discussion, uh, the one of the guests who is uh, uh, Dalia Ziada, um, she's a uh, rights activist, uh, she's a Muslim. Uh, she argued that uh, country's government should not play God, quote unquote, and it should not uh, tell people what they should believe and what they should not believe. In response to this uh, this statement, uh, Akbar said, and I will quote uh, at 17 minutes and 20 seconds approximately, he said, quote, it's a very strange thing that is being said here. Any country that is based on a religious foundation, as Pakistan was, has a right to legally, end quote. This is what Akbar said. And then after this, he went on to justify uh, Pakistani's law, uh, Pakistan's laws, which discriminate against uh, minorities. Uh, the purpose of my video is... Um, to um, argue against uh, and prove against uh, his statement that Pakistan was uh, founded based on religion. This is exactly what he said. Uh, a country, uh, any country that is based on a religious f foundation as Pakistan was. So I'm um, going to prove that this statement is false. Uh, the question is, was Pakistan founded on the basis of religion? And a broader a related question is what basis, on what basis was Pakistan founded? In order to answer this question, I am going to go straight to the source. Uh, the founder of Pakistan, uh, his pictures are here. Uh, I searched it on Google Images, as you can see. This is uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Uh, he's known as the Qaid Azam, the great leader of Pakistan. Um, on August 11, 1947, uh, he gave his famous speech. This was three days before the Declaration of Independence of Pakistan. In his speech, I'm going to read a few parts of this speech. Okay. At one point, he said, and I quote, and you can read, If you change your past and work together in a spirit that every one of you no matter to what community he belongs no matter what relations he had with you in the past no matter what is his color caste or creed is first second and last a citizen of this state with equal rights privileges and obligations there will be no end to the progress you will make this was the message that Qaid Azam gave to the Pakistanis of the time Uh, the next thing I'm going to read from his speech is uh, as follows, and I quote, You are free. You are free to go to your temples. You are free to go to your mosques or to any other place of worship in the state of Pakistan. You may belong to any religion or caste or creed. 
that has nothing to do with the business of the state. I repeat, you may belong to any religion or caste or creed that has nothing to do with the business of the state. This is the founder of Pakistan. Keep this in mind. Next thing that I'm going to read from his speech is as follows. We are starting in the days where there is no discrimination, no distinction between one community and another, no discrimination between one caste or creator and another. We are starting with this fundamental principle that we are all citizens and equal citizens of one state. And the next thing that I'm going to read from Qadiyazm's speech is as follows, the final thing. My guiding principle will be justice and complete impartiality. So the foundation of Pakistan, as you can see, is justice, equality, and freedom, not religion. Now, I have some limited knowledge about the history and the context of the founding of Pakistan. And the basic idea is that the British in the early 20th century decided to leave India. And as a result, the concern was arising that most the Muslims of India who were a minority in, in India would be persecuted against by the Hindus. Because of this, uh, the, there was a need to protect the rights, the, the religious freedom of Muslims. Uh, at first, the idea came that there should be laws made within India to protect the rights, and there should be separate communities of Muslims within India with their own laws to protect their rights but this idea did not work out and consequently uh, it was necessary for a separate country to be made and now uh, that was done but it's ironic how after fear of persecution after gaining their rights the Pakistan the Pakistanis decided to take away the rights of other minorities uh, and they forgot that at one point they were wearing the shoes of those minorities they were a minority themselves at one point getting back to Akbar's statement bottom line is that it is completely false to say that Pakistan was created on a religious foundation here's the speech of the, the, the founder of Pakistan according to him the country was not founded on the basis of religion. It was founded on the basis of freedom, equality, and justice, which was threatened because Muslims were a minority in India before the formation of Pakistan. And with all due respect, as I understand, Akbar was born and raised in Pakistan. When he grew up and went to school, he learned he was taught in 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 uh, in the, about the Pakistan of his uh, about the history of Pakistan, and please correct me if I'm wrong. He was taught that uh, this was the foundation of Pakistan, was the threat to the Muslims, the issue of freedom and justice. So he should know this, and in spite of that, he's still using the false statement as a basis to support the arguments. Uh, in favor of the discrimination laws of Pakistan that's uh, complete injustice uh, speaking of the laws I will uh, show those, law those laws and I'll compare them to the speech but first I'm going to show the passport application of Pakistan so every single person who has a Pakistani citizenship and has a Pakistani passport has completed this application and in this application there are two declarations one is for all applicants the first one at the top second declaration is for Muslims only and as you can see 
that in order to be considered a Muslim for the purposes of the Pakistani passport and Pakistani citizenship, one has to certify that he or she considers Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian to be an imposter and and has to consider whoever follow whoever follows Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed to be non-Muslim. So to all of the Pakistanis who are not aware, if you have a Pakistani passport and it says Muslim on it, you have already declared Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian to be false and you have already declared his followers to be non-Muslims whether you know it or not whether you know who Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian was what his claim was or not you have already claimed him to be false so this is uh, the freedom of conscience uh, freedom of religion that Pakistan is currently promoting obviously very contrary to the the the, the principles of the founder of Pakistan now here is the Constitution of Pakistan section 260 definitions uh, the first definition is the de definition of a Muslim second one is non-Muslim and as you can see the definition of a non-Muslim includes Ahmadis and uh, amongst other uh, uh, other people people of other faiths so uh, anybody who is in Pakistan uh, who wants to call himself a Muslim if they be, believe in Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian to be a prophet they are forced to uh, be in this category of non-Muslims against their freedom of thought against their freedom of religion this is the the state interfering in a person's personal religious beliefs against uh, the founder of Pakistan as you can clearly see the next thing that I'm going to show is the penal code of Pakistan or the criminal code right now I'm on section 298b so it says uh, any person of the Qadiani group or Lahori group who call themselves Muslim uh, either by words spoken or written or by visible representation if uh, we use any of these terms um, Amir, uh, Amiratul Mumineen, Khalifatul Mumineen, Khalifatul Anhu. for anybody other than um, uh, those Muslims consider them to be those other Muslims consider them to be um, shall be punished uh, with the prison up to three years and a fine so uh, Muslim terminology we're not allowed to use it for uh, somebody uh, who we consider to be a prophet uh, we're forced to not use these terms otherwise we get uh, we're thrown into jail this is uh, this is your uh, ideal country that the founder of Pakistan proposed one that uh, allows everybody to practice their religion freely and this is the current Pakistan, the reality, um, these restrictions. And further, uh, if you read uh, subsection 2 of 298b, it says any person of Qadiani Lahori group who call themselves Ahmadis, um, either by words spoken or written by or by visible representation, if they call um, the call, of, call to prayers Azan, uh, if we if we recite the azan that's recited by other Muslims, uh, we are liable for up to three years in prison and a fine. Now the funny thing is uh, another irony here that uh, Pakistan uh, was created because uh, their their uh, religious freedom was under threat, and the, one of the reasons was that uh, before the British had ruled in India, uh, at one time there was a uh, government of uh, six and they prevented the Muslims from calling Azan. this was the religious persecution that Muslims faced and this is the same same thing that's being imposed on Amdi Muslims same kind of persecutions that Muslims are already faced they're forcing others to face so that's another irony now 298c 
is uh, the worst one in, in, in within 298. Uh, so M these either directly or indirectly uh, poses himself as a Muslim or calls or refers to his faith as Islam. So we're not even allowed to call ourselves Muslim. Um, and it says by words spoken or written or by visible representations or in any manner whatsoever outrages the feelings of religious feelings of Muslims shall be punished. Now how in the world is a court going to determine that an Amdi has outraged the religious feelings of another Muslim in any manner whatsoever what's any manner whatsoever so I can walk down the street and I can uh, cross my hands together and uh, another Muslim can look at me and say that uh, he's pretending to be a Muslim because he's crossing his hands that's how Muslims do it and my religious feelings have been outraged and so this person should be uh, thrown in jail for three years and be liable for a fine this is uh, the religious freedom that Pakistan offers and this is um, again the uh, beautiful speech by uh, the Qaeda Azam of Pakistan who dreamed of a Pakistan that would uh, give uh, religious freedom so in gaining the religious freedom the Muslims have taken away religious freedom how ironic and getting back to the point of Akbar Chaudhary, um, it's a funny thing that uh, it's it's not a funny it's not a, a a strange thing what was said by Dalia. She was actually uh, indirectly criticizing these laws. She was speaking in favor of the founder of Pakistan. Uh, the funny thing, the actual funny thing is, is that. Um, Akbar is uh, presently living in the United Kingdom and in that country he enjoys religious freedom he's allowed to represent himself as a Muslim, he's allowed to call himself Muslim he's allowed to pray like a Muslim, he's allowed to say salam like a Muslim he's allowed to say the kalima and uh, he doesn't face three years in jail, he doesn't face a fine so the same thing, same freedom that he enjoys uh, in, in living in peace in a country that is substantially relatively peaceful compared to Pakistan there's, there's the same kind of freedom that he professes to take away from others just because they hold different beliefs so uh, this is the reality of Akbar Chaudhary and I just wanted to draw the attention of the uh, the viewers to this um, and wanted to say that you should be careful and you should check the facts because um, just by using that one little statement that Pakistan is based on uh, uh, was founded based on religion the one false statement and uses that as a basis to justify all these laws and uh, people don't look at it in detail people don't understand these things people don't understand the reality the reality that's in front of you right now the speech of Qadi Azim, the, the the basis of uh, foundation of Pakistan so uh, be aware and do your homework and most importantly pray and uh, that's that's the key to, to to finding justice to finding the right path thank you for watching